Blessed be God the Father, and the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit, for he has shown us his merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on Trinity Sunday. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass worthily, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, whom by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. With the two tablets of stone in his hands, Jesus, Moses went up the mountain of Sinai in the early morning, as the Lord had commanded him. And the Lord descended in the form of a cloud, and Moses stood with him there. He called on the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, Lord God, a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. And Moses bowed down to the ground at once and worshipped. If I have indeed won your favour, Lord, he said, let my Lord come with us, I beg. True, they are a headstrong people. But forgive us our faults and sins, and adopt us as your heritage. The Word of the Lord. You are blessed, Lord God of our fathers, to you glory and praise forevermore. Blessed your glorious holy name, to you glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed in the temple of your glory, to you glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed on the throne of your kingdom, to you glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed to gaze into the depths, to you glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed in the firmament of heaven, to you glory and praise forevermore. 
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we wish you happiness. Try to grow perfect. Help one another. Be united. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send you greetings. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. The Gospel of the Lord. teacher was talking to her junior class about God and how hard it was to know about God. Where is God? The teacher asked. I know where God is, cried out this little boy. He's in our bathroom. In the bathroom, the teacher replied. Yes, every morning my dad stomps up the stairs raps on the bathroom door and yells, My God, are you still in there? Yes, God is in the bathroom because he's everywhere. And our happiness as human beings lies in acknowledging his existence and, of course, living by his commandments. The Old Testament tells us that at the foot of Mount Sinai, the Israelites fashioned a golden calf. They called it God, and guess what? They worshipped it. And this happened exactly at the same time as Moses was at the top of the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments from the true God. So when he came down the mountain and he saw what was going on, he was in a right humor. And he smashed the Ten Commandments to pieces. Now the first of these commandments, of course, is I am the Lord your God. Thou shalt not have strange gods before me. And when the Israelites heard this, they took Moses serious and they smashed the golden calf to smithereens at the foot of the mountain, Mount Sinai. Question we could ask now, are there any golden calves in our society which we need to smash? Life and death issues come to mind. In 2018 I was in Auschwitz where it was decided by the infamous camp doctor who was to live and who was to die. I'm told it's not unheard of these days for a doctor to ask an expectant mother if she wants to keep her baby. Now surely that's playing God. That's worshipping the golden calf at the foot of the mountain. And the euthanasia body, they talk about the right to die for poor, vulnerable, elderly or old people. But we know 
that the right to die, which the, the euthanasia lobby are always clamoring on about, can over time feel like or translate into the duty to die. So these old vulnerable people may feel they're not wanted anymore. Now that's worshipping that golden calf as well at the foot of the that's another example of playing God. Have you noticed that often people put the blame on God for all wars and religious conflicts in the world? However, the breaking of the first commandment is what causes wars, not God. Even natural disasters are triggered by humans. Soil erosion caused by deforestation, often results in landslides. Floods as a result of climate change can become deadly. The first commandment requires us, of course, to be stewards of God's creation, not exploiters. But we can also invent ourselves a caricature of God and be swayed by it. One such Caricature, one spiritual writer calls the cuddly bear God. This is a sugar coated God who is falling over himself to smooth out all the ruffles of our lives. The, this parody of God keeps us shielded from every pain. And yet, how many people have found God in the midst of pain? People have turned from false gods in the midst of a struggle and turned towards the true God. A bit like the Israelites at the foot of the mountain when they smashed their golden calf to smithereens. The present pandemic is not an act of God, despite what people say. But despite the painful aspects of the disease, positives are coming through as well. God can bring good out of a painful situation. Jesus asks us, doesn't he, to take up our crosses every day and follow him and not use your religion as an escape hatch from life's problems. The Lord never promised us a trouble-free life, but he asks us to do the opposite, to take up our cross and unite it with his cross as he made his way to Calvary. So I think the cuddly bear God, that one spiritual writer described as a false God, that needs to go into Frank Skinner's room 101. Now the book of Genesis, the very first book in the Bible as you know, says that God made man and woman in his own image and likeness. But have we ever tried to refashion God into our own image and likeness? For instance, on the day Ireland voted overwhelmingly yes in last year's abortion refer referendum, the following day or that evening, sorry, a government spokesman said, the vote shows we're now a country that is more compassionate, more caring, and more respectful. But he should have added, and more merciless towards the unborn, the innocent child in the womb. Now, that's fashioning God. That's fashioning God into our own distorted image, conveniently forgetting the fact that God's fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill, has indeed been truly ignored. Our duty is to love God, and we do this by keeping his commandments, whilst at the same time recognizing our creaturely dependence upon him. 
without whom we can do nothing. Thank you for listening. God bless you all. Father, through your Holy Spirit, you gave Christ to us in the flesh, so that we, we have life through him. Filled now with the same life, we raise our hearts and minds in prayer. Father Almighty, all acknowledge that you, the Word and the Spirit, are one, as we believe in one God. So may we hope in you and love you. Lord, hear us. Father of the living, bring those who have died to share your glory. With your Son and the Holy Spirit, may they reign eternally with you in heaven. Lord, hear us. Father, almighty, eternal God, in the name of your Son, send your Holy Spirit upon the church, that the Comforter preserve us in unity, harmony, and the fullness of truth. Lord, hear us. Lord, send your laborers into the harvest to teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Strengthen them all in the faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, support all those who suffer persecution on account of their faith in your Son. Give them the spirit of truth, who will, according to his promise, speak through them. Lord, heal us. Let us now pray to Mary, the mother of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Prayer for healing. Merciful God, come to the help of your people. Be our shelter in this time of peril and strengthen the bonds of our community. Bring healing to all who suffer the ravages of disease and assist those whose skill and art can put an end to this affliction. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord, our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of our substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and incarnate Godhead, you might be adored in proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by the angels and archangels, the cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. 
Let us pray with confidence to God our Father in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with us always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Since you are children of God, God has in, sent into your hearts the Spirit of his Son, the Spirit who cries out, Abba, Father.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace of Christ.